has expired. Dr. Desiree, uh, I want to thank the chairman for holding this important hearing on keeping college within reach and certainly would like to thank our witnesses for sharing your testimony with us today. Uh, with the traditional student uh, quickly being supplanted by older workers pursuing better skills to help provide for their families, the one-size-fits-all approach to higher education seems to be more out of date than ever. And all around the country, including in my district, uh, colleges are pursuing innovative strategies that partner with local industry to match student skills and employer needs. Uh, one example in Tennessee's 4th District is Motlow College, uh, teaming with companies like Bridgestone and uh, uh, Nissan to uh, provide a mechatronics program, which is allowing students at the high school level uh, to get into programs and have good paying jobs. And they're having almost a 100% placement rate. Um, Dr. Kim, I wanted to visit with you a little bit today. First, I wanted to let you know that uh, I'm the beneficiary of one of your alumni in my office. Robert Jamison is our communications director and has been for three years, so we thank you for that. Um, in your testimony, you referenced Georgia Southern's University's Worker Readiness Education Loan Program. Uh, can you explain the university's involvement with local businesses in the creation of this program and the benefits you see uh, offering this to the students? Yes, thank you. Uh, we have just begun to have conversations with business and industry about how this sort of program um, might benefit not only our students, but certainly a business. And the concept here is to get an industry or business to become engaged with the student at, at their very first year um, uh, during their, their college experience. And, and as that student progresses through, not only does the interaction between the student and the business become more intense, but the investment that industry makes in that student becomes more intense. So that by the time the student becomes a junior, they get a full ride scholarship, a loan, if you will, provided by that industry, coupled with a very active co-op program so that the student spends a significant amount of time uh, at that particular job site. Now, this serves a lot of purposes. One, it, it really helps the student know what it's gonna be like to work in that particular job site, in that particular industry, uh, in that particular community, uh, give them a chance to know what it's really gonna be like to, to live there. Uh, the industry can, by investing in these students in the early stage and by that investment ramping up, will we'll give them a chance to, to, to better train that student in what the culture is going to be like once the student graduates. But one, the student will graduate and then complete a one to three year commitment with that particular industry, that would loan or that scholarship would be forgiven. It would it truly become a scholarship at that point. We all know industry spends hundreds of thousands of dollars during the first year of hiring a new individual only to have that individual quit and move to some other location, not only because they didn't particularly like working in that industry, they just, just didn't like living in that community. And so by having this sort of, of loan program coupled with very active co-ops will give students a chance to know what it's like to live in the community, work in the industry, and if they stay with that industry, have an opportunity to have their, their basically their tuition and their fees paid for. Right, that sounds like a great program. Another issue facing the higher education community is the relationship between two-year and technical colleges and four-year institutions. Uh, Dr. Kill, what role does Georgia Southern University play in the transfer of credits from two-year and technical colleges? No, I, I appreciate that question very much. Uh, we in the state of Georgia, I think, have a distinct advantage over some other states, perhaps, in that all of the two-year and four-year universities are within the same system. So uh, we have a very... Uh, definite program in place that, that mandates that as a four-year institution, I uh, accept a student coming from a two-year institution with 30 hours if they've maintained a 2.0 uh, GPA. So we already have that program in place and, and it works very, very well. We also have a chance for reverse transfer opportunities for students that may come to Georgia Southern initially as a freshman, but for a variety of reasons discover that they don't need a four-year degree. We can now send them to a two-year university so they can get their associate degree at that point in time and have a real credential they can take with them to prove it and give them, an give them something for the amount of time that they spent. But in addition to that, the technical college system in Georgia is truly a different system. Uh, and, and our two uh, system leaders, our chancellor and, and the commissioner for the technical college system, have come together for this whole complete college Georgia a process that I mentioned. Uh, and we have very active articulation agreements with the technical colleges. Georgia Southern, for example, now has an articulation agreement with Savannah Technical College in logistics where those students can get their associate degree at, at, at Savannah Tech and transfer all of those credits directly to Georgia Southern and seamlessly go right into either a BS degree in logistics or all the way to the PhD if they so desire. We have other articulation agreements with other uh, technical colleges as well. So I, it, it works very, very well. You just have to have institutions and leadership with them to, to make that happen. 
Thank you. And y yes. Yes, I, I would simply say that to have these broad-based articulation systems in place like we do in Maryland not only allows for the transfer of credit from the more traditional institutions, but as we move forward with these new innovative kinds of competency-based educations, it will provide the initial framework for which the faculty from the institutions can uh, converse and, in fact, determine ways that those competency-based credits can transfer as well. The gentleman's time has expired. Mr. Hinojosa. Chairman Klein and Ranking Member.